Welcome, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Today, we're going to review and talk about um, the new source book uh, for, from Modifius Entertainment, uh, the Delta Quadrant source book for the Star Trek role playing game. Um, I was excited to, for this to come our way. Um, I know we talked about wanting to see more um, uh, content, uh, especially since a lot of the other source books kind of you kind of need all them all for it to really work, in my opinion. Well, it's 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 um, it's a high quality book, like um, like the rest of their books. Um, beautiful illustrations. It's really, in some sense, it's kind of Voyager the source book because all of the information yes. comes from that one show. But it's actually yeah. a lot more than just Voyager, and and it's it's really kind of the the setting of Voyager that doesn't really have a lot of information. It doesn't have any information about Voyager itself. So the, it's not yeah. about Voyager. It's about the Delta Quadrant. It's just yeah. that everything we know about the Delta Quadrant came from the show Voyager. Yeah. Well, oh, almost. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting reading this. It's a lot of it I remember. A lot of it I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, man, this book, it's, 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 again, it's jam packed full of um, information. It's, it's, you know, I, so I've done graphic design and you know when sometimes when you have a 10 page layout and you don't have enough written information for like five pages, what a trick that graphic designers do is just fill the rest of the pages with art, graphs or sure. whatever you can find. So you can yep. expand it to 10 pages. I didn't sure. feel that way with about this book. This book, there was so much uh, text in it is, is that it was no room for pictures. Sometimes they'll, they'll have a whole, there's sections on, on alien races that you can, you can play. A lot of it is you either you know it or you gotta Google it <laughs> to find out what exactly they are. They do a good job describing it, but a lot of it was like, I don't remember this. And, what I, and so I have to kind of like Google it and find out what they were. Uh, so this is a standalone by itself if, if, uh, if I wasn't, Role playing or, or using that book for that. It's a great resource book for uh, like all the the alien races that they've uh, encountered. Uh, um, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a good collection of information. Yeah, it is jammed packed with information, and it covers everything. It it is really. Yeah. I actually really enjoy Voyager. I'll admit that the first time around when it was on television, I um I wasn't that deep into it but watching it again on netflix i've uh, i'm on my second viewing now i mean Hmm. i'm kind of jumping through it i'm not watching but i've watched the whole thing through on netflix i i actually really enjoy it um this book really just has everything it is amazing how much um you know it's yeah like you said even if you never were going to play the game it is just an incredible resource an easter egg hunt (laughs) through yeah. through the series and oh wait those guys were kind of in the background the one series and here's a whole write-up for them um and you know not only that it actually it goes beyond the show you know it um it details races you know further than we see in the show there there's these guys yeah. i just saw the episode voth they're the um it's a great ser- great uh, great story they're they're evolved dinosaurs who left earth um you know before the extinction event yeah and they traveled to delta quadrant and um they you know there's a whole story about them but anyway there there is just one episode but in that one episode we just kind of learned that they they're very very advanced technologically advanced in an offhanded way they just kind of throw it out in the episode but this book details all that it, it actually mm. details all that information. You can take these guys who showed up in one episode and turn them into, you know, play them as the power they are in the Delta Quadrant. Yeah, I, I, this book, I felt like it, some role-playing books tend to hold your hand in a way to kind of guide you through how uh, a world or setting works. I didn't feel that way at all about this book. It, it's definitely made for hardcore Trekkie fans. Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like I could read this book and I could do a true pursuit game afterwards of just on Voyager <laughs> and, and have yeah. a decent chance of winning. You know, it, it, it was a great book. Um, and uh, the information, you know, the other thing, <laughs> so I, I said before that you know, this could be the Voyager source book. The other thing it could be is the Borg source book. 
it has a yep, tremendous a... amount of information on the board, adding all sorts of things that never appeared in Voyager or anywhere else. You know, different kinds yeah. of orgs, different kinds of ships, all sorts of stuff. You know, yeah, um, this is, uh, and it's great because I think. I mean, the Borg is the one thing I think people want to face against in Star Trek. It's just, it's just so popular. And so, yeah. I, I, again, I yeah. loved reading about that. And, and they, got, they get so into um, – they even do their best to kind of uh, – a lot of the, like um, – how should I say it? Uh, you know how, like, sometimes the movies will contradict – uh, what happened in previous in, in the episode? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Best to kind of balance that, you know, with with the board queen, for example, you know, like adding that in, how to explain all that. I thought they did a great job, and yeah. re reconciling that. Yeah, no, they did. They did a great job. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's it, 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 tons of things. That, even besides the board, they have like like uh, different uh, warships from different races. It, there's there's so much, uh, and and I I like this because I think this is like if I were to play Star Trek, I would play yep. at the Delta because it seems like such a big unknown. There's so many possible uh, horrible things that could happen there and I just can't wait to bring yeah. players into that. Yeah, well, they, they say that in the game. They say that, you know, more, maybe more so than any place else in this, any of the quadrants, the Delta Quadrant is the big unknown with the most room for you guys, for you to expand. And, um, you know, they, they, have, uh, they have these wonderful little in-universe asides where they have Cardassians talking about the Borg or somebody in Starfleet talking about something mm. else. And um, I'm usually not a big fan of gaming fiction, uh, but those are really well done. They really invoke the, the universe. And actually, some of them really make some good points. You know, there's uh, this one little aside from a Star three, Starfleet anthropologist. And... Uh, he says, well, Voyager's great and all, and, and, you know, they did a wonderful job, and I've read all their reports. But, the, you know, when they tell us about a race, they're telling us about a single incident with a small group of individuals. This may not reflect the entire race. Yeah. So, you know, that's a wonderful bit of um, fiction, but it also kind of drives home the point that as the game master, you can expand this. Are the Herogen all crazy hunters? Maybe not. Maybe that's just one part of their civilization that Voyager ran into. You know, maybe they have a, you know, a big religious uh, pacifist community. Who knows? Voyager yeah. was running through the Delta Quadrant. It didn't stop to explore it. I mean, there did a lot of that, but most of it was... So um, the book really, um, really kind of, uh, you know, really kind of gives you license to expand on things. And, you know, there's a, there's a part of the book that says, um, uh, that says you could run, they put forward the idea that you could run an entire non-Starfleet game. You could run a game in the Delta Quadrant with natives of the Gul Delta Quadrant that doesn't have anything to do with humanity. <laughs> Yeah, it would be like a, a completely different game, you know, in the Star Trek universe, but nothing to do with Starfleet. And I was like, well, that's interesting. That's mm. kind of cool. Now, for uh, I, I also like that they have of all the uh, life path choices that they had, mm -hmm. they could choose for your character. Yeah, they uh, introduce a new Liberator one. Borg. Liberator yep. Borg, I think it's the one that stands out to me as my favorite. The rest of them are sound okay, but again, I, I my my it's been a while again since I watched Voyager. Mm -hmm. um, and even then, it wasn't the whole way through. So the sure. that sound okay to me, you know. Um, but the, of course, Liberate Boy, just to me, it's like, all right, if I have to play anything right now, I will play that. <laughs> well, I like the fact that uh, they had a section on playing unique characters and non-Starfleet yeah. characters. Because as Voyager goes through the quadrant, they pick up people, right? They pick up Neelix and they pick up Seven and Nine yeah. and, you know, people who are not Starfleet. So they say you can play non-Starfleet characters in this game. This game advances the uh, default timeline. Time frame of yes. the game is actually advanced till the end of the Voyager series. So Voyager has returned to Earth. Um, and so they detail different ways that you can get your Starfleet people to the Delta Quadrant, including some of that new technology like the transwarp and the co conduits and all that sort of stuff. And uh, 
and and they pick up on all sorts of little things. Like uh, at the beginning of the series, it's revealed that the caretaker who grabbed Voyager and threw them in the Delta Quadrant actually tried that with a lot of other people. So you could be one yeah. of the other ships that that happened. Uh, you could be from a wandering wormhole. Um, all sorts of things happen. You, um, they also have, uh, <laughs> they also have options for playing in any era. So you can actually play yes. uh, the original series in the Delta Quadrant. You can play um, yeah. I was, the Enterprise. I was very surprised how, yeah. how well detailed the, the explanation is. It, it was just like, hey, just, you know, hap, you know, randomly be in there. They actually have, they actually list, well, they don't list the episodes. They, there's no footnotes for those, which I no. kind of wish there was. No. Yeah, um, you kind of have to But they, they go ahead and explain this. like, they kind of explain. They explain to you like, all right, these instances that happened throughout different series, and like, uh, and how that could have, that could have been related to how your characters during those eras are connected to the Delta Quad. I thought that was very, very well done. Yes, I am continually impressed by how well these guys know and care and love Star Trek. It yeah. is really amazing, particularly now, compared to. Some other things oh, sorry. that I won't mention. <laughs> um, one thing I've noticed is that the art is fantastic, like you mentioned before. What's yep. interesting is that a lot of the art is very like action heavy, you know. But well, the text true. don't re- the text don't re- reflect that so much. It's that yeah. what I really like about about this book is that it emphasizes exploration. Yeah, there's it's very dangerous out there, and yeah, there is mm-hmm. there's definitely combat uh, possibilities. But it really emphasizes on the on the aspect of exploration, that you're out there to seek out new life forms. Yeah, no, it is fantastic. It is, it is a great, it's a really, really good book. So yeah, it, it, again, it has a lot of different uh, races or life paths, as they call it here, mm-hmm. uh, a lot yep. of different ships. Um, they're in the back, they have, instead of having um, a venture uh, or adventures. Yeah, so instead of giving you a whole planned out, one whole worked out adventure, they give you, you know, several different seeds that you can take and develop into adventures, which I actually really like. I prefer that, you know, give me a little yes. something to kind of get me started, but I can, I can do all the grunt work myself. I'll put all, all that in. I, I prefer to do it myself, but the idea is, yeah. 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 Again, I feel like this book is, instead of being very introductory, is to say, Hey, listen, you, you bought this book because you love Delta Quad, you love Star Trek. So here, we're going to give you what you need and that's it. We're not going to, uh, baby or anything like that. We're going to give you the, the, the most information you can so you can run this this setting in the, in the best way possible. Yeah, definitely. I think so. Yep. If I had to uh, give this a rating, yeah. and I do, <laughs> yes. I would give this an intelligence score of 18. I really cannot yeah. imagine how this book could be better. If you, if you I, love Star Trek, if you love the Star Trek role-playing game, even if you don't, actually, even if you don't play the game, this is a good book. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 worthy for your collection, whether you role play or not. Yeah. If you definitely. love Star Trek, this book is for you. Yep, I should say so. Go on and get the book. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, live long so, and yes, prosper. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, please like and subscribe, and um, let us know what you think in the comments below. And have a great day. <laughs>